Gaspar Noé's entire filmography is essentially a back and forth argument for and against natalism. No clear conclusion is provided, but can only be extrapolated and discussed by the viewer. Noé's films seem to argue that there is no right or wrong answer, that as humans, there is no way to determine whether bringing a child into this world is good or evil. A case can be made for each one. This theme is prominent in all of his feature films, and can even be seen in Karn, a short film that follows a nihilistic butcher living in France, the same butcher seen later in I Stand Alone and Irreversible. Towards the beginning of Karn, a horse is shot at a slaughterhouse, and it bleeds out. The horse meat is then fed to the butcher's lover. She is reluctant to eat it, but he insists that she should, as she is pregnant and needs to be strong. From the very beginning, we are treated to the relationship between life and death. Death, in this case, is what helps sustain life. The butcher wants the mother of his child to be strong during this time, so she should eat meat that would make her strong. If she doesn't, the meat would have gone to waste. The butcher wants to make the most out of death, so that he can make the most out of life. But the mother of the child doesn't like this, and she states that both the meat and the baby within her have bad qualities to them. Eventually, she does deliver the baby. We are even treated to seeing the inside of her womb, and then the subsequent delivery of her child. At this point, the butcher seems to have a much more optimistic view of the world, and here he wants to be the father of this child. But the mother expects the child to be a boy, but as it turns out, the child's biological sex is female. This angers the mother, as she does not want a girl. She eventually flees, leaving their daughter behind for him to raise her on his own. Je m'en vais, je te laisse Cynthia. Ne me cherche pas, c'est trop tard. And he does just this. We see time pass by as the butcher is forced to take on both traditional parental roles. He cares for his daughter alone. The butcher ultimately spirals downward into a nihilistic state, fed up with the world around him that continuously drags him down and pushes him around. Le temps passe trop vite quand on travaille. Tous les jours la même boucherie, les mêmes gestes et les mêmes clients. The film cuts from the butcher cutting meat to his daughter riding on a mechanical horse. We see the juxtaposition of carnage and innocence with horses serving as a motif. This is the world the butcher is living in and the only world his daughter knows. Et les années passent sans qu'on ait le temps de les compter. C'est ainsi que ma fille a grandi dans le silence, sans que je puisse dire comment. His daughter Cynthia is mute. She cannot speak, but she observes. She grows and changes, and thinks to herself. But we are treated instead to the thoughts of the butcher as he raises her. He's become accustomed to raise her as a child, but she grows before his eyes, and he no longer knows what to do. Et puis en quelques mois, Cynthia est devenue jeune fille. Elle a pris des formes. Ça m'a fait bizarre. He is at a loss of understanding as his daughter goes through puberty. Because to him, she is still a baby. Or at least, he wants her to be. This is likely the reason he still bathes her and dresses her in the manner that he does. As if she were just a little child. The butcher is so caught up with his day-to-day -day routine that seeing her grow is something new and unexpected, because it differs from the norm. He lives in a depressive state, but it's not like he even makes attempts to escape it. 
the man on the television set is constantly reminding him that there is more out there, that there is hope in life, the light at the end of the tunnel. But the butcher ultimately ignores this. While we hear the internal monologue of the butcher, it is through the television that we get a more alternative way of looking at life. Perhaps the butcher is afraid of the light and afraid of what it takes to find it. And that is why he lives in darkness. And maybe if the butcher doesn't find this light, he is ultimately wasting his life away. And then he'll just wind up dead. And if he's not careful, the cynical pattern will just continue onward. But the butcher continues to view life pessimistically, as if life is like a line, one that barely changes. And this is why the changes that do occur affect him so much. He is in awe of his daughter as she matures physically. Ces jambes sont en train de changer. Normal. Sur cette peau, sur cette chair, coule le même sang dans mes veines. Et ça fera un jour une femme. He is taken aback that his baby is now becoming a woman. Une vraie femme. While the butcher is at work, his daughter begins experiencing pain inside her. A worker gives her some money to ride the horse. Following this, the worker begins kissing her. However, she pushes him off. The daughter returns to her father with blood on her clothes. The butcher believes she was raped. In actuality, she had her first period. She is now, as her father would say, a woman. The butcher grabs his knife and goes after the man he believes to have raped his daughter. He feels it is his duty as a father to avenge her, even if it means taking another's life. The butcher sticks his blade into the worker's mouth and then beats the man up. He states that he hates violence, but in life, we need violence. Personne ne l'aime, mais il faut en passer par là. And it is at this point that the film begins to have more parallels and references to abortion. Prior to this, the film presents a light antinatalist worldview, though challenged by the television. But this is when things really begin to crumble, and the butcher really begins questioning the actual value and practicality of life. He wouldn't have been in this position that he is in now had he and his former lover not brought life into this world, had his daughter been aborted instead. He questions why someone would not want to die, but asserts that they will die regardless. And in this case, the man's fate is at the hands of the butcher. The butcher wants to be in control here, but he ultimately loses everything he had due to his choices. The butcher is charged for his actions and is locked away. Everything he once had is gone. And it is here that he begins longing for his daughter even more, to the point that his love for her is ancestral. Now that she has become a woman, he lusts after her, something that wouldn't occur had she never been born. 
The butcher returns to society after doing time, and he is seduced by a woman. As he kisses her, he thinks about his daughter. Pasa, Cynthia. Cynthia. The two enter a relationship, and she insists that he should just forget about his daughter. Why did you write it? I thought you wanted to forget. You don't know what you want. The butcher responds by taking his frustrations out on her by doing the two things he couldn't resist. Je suis son employé. Il y a bien deux choses que je ne pourrais pas lui refuser. La première, c'est un coup de trick. La deuxième, c'est un coup de poing. He ultimately rejects finding the light at the end of the tunnel by sleeping with the woman. He lets the cycle continue onward by accidentally getting the woman pregnant. She breaks the news while eating horse meat. Tu sais, je ne saigne plus. Quoi? Je crois que je suis enceinte. The cycle starts anew with her pregnancy. By eating this meat during her pregnancy, she is demonstrating her strength to the butcher. But now, it is the butcher who does not want her to reproduce. But he goes through with it anyway. She states that they can start anew, and so the cycle begins again. As the butcher leaves his daughter to raise a child with someone, he kisses her goodbye, seemingly closing that door behind him. Afterwards, his daughter watches the television. The actors on it state the doors of hell are open. Ce monde, mon temps le suffit. Mes amis, les portes de l'enfer se sont ouvertes. Les diables ont envahi le monde. Aidez-moi. Essentially, the butcher has not looked for this light. This is the point in the film where a new life is about to begin. But the butcher looks cynically at childbirth now, believing it to be wrong. The butcher monologues about what babies mean to their mother, stating that his mistress got exactly what she wanted. Elle, elle a eu ce qu'elle voulait. La même chose que toutes les femmes d'ailleurs. Un bébé qui lui pompe les seins, qui grandisse et la protège jusqu'à la mort. C'est tout qu'on va faire, et ça leur donne l'impression que leur vie a un sens, comme si la vie pouvait avoir un autre sens que sa propre survie. Largely because of the pain and inner turmoil that he has experienced, he views life to lack meaning beyond survival. Obviously, this is a rather pessimistic view of human life. He focuses on how the baby is important to the mother because of what they can bring to her. In this case, it is protection. So, at least in this specific case, he views motherhood as being selfish. If the mother truly cared. She wouldn't have given birth in the first place. He also states how he regrets having had sex with her, stating that the pleasure of sex in the moment does not outweigh the pain in life. Le monde, c'est chacun pour soi. Un type tire sa crampe, et pour un orgasme de neuf secondes, son enfant doit morfler pendant soixante ans. He scoffs at his mistress, acknowledging she is not fit to be a mother. In that the baby will be raised in a bad living condition. Mais la grosse, est-ce qu'elle se rend compte que l'existence de son enfant sera encore plus nulle que la sienne? The butcher then penetrates his mistress once again, this time with the intention of harming the baby inside of her. He ultimately views this as a good deed, in his mind at least. This is for the baby's best interest, sparing them of misery. Mais moi. Je lui pompe le cul. Je vais le lui ramener tellement fort qu'il va faire une fausse couche. Ouais. Si je l'encule assez fort, je pourrais épargner un innocent 60 ans de calvaire. He takes on this rather antinatalist stance and claims it is his mission in life. Voilà ma mission dans ce monde. Sauver cet avorton qu'elle veut faire pousser dans ses tripes. Je l'encule. Je vais tous les enculer. Encore plus fort qu'ils ne l'ont fait. As he violently penetrates her body, he imagines his daughter, and we see the mechanical horse moving back and forth, 
His role as a father is ultimately corrupted by his own mind and by time. His daughter has become a young woman, and he is plagued by ancestral desires, desires for his own flesh and blood, a daughter birthed by a mother who did not want her. He would never be in this position had he not reproduced. But this antinatalist stance is not exactly shared by the film itself. We see what the butcher does, and we hear what the butcher thinks, but it is suggested that this is not the objectively right way to view life. We see a worker and a son in the shop, reminding us that in life, men can be fathers and find happiness by being just that. Likewise, children can have good lives. But just as quickly as we see this brief glimpse of joy, we cut back to the butcher's misery. The butcher and his mistress drive through France on a rainy day, determined to start a new life. Everything turns to darkness. Everything seems bleak. The butcher's life ultimately did not work out for him. It didn't go the way he wanted it to. Now he is with this woman carrying his child. Just as his sperm entered her egg, their vehicle enters this tunnel. But there's an important thing to remember here that it seems no way is suggesting. And you know, she was right before you. And you wait at the other end of the tunnel. Even in the darkest of tunnels, there is light on the other side. Even when it doesn't seem to be there, it still is. We are just afraid of it, afraid to let the light outshine the darkness. But if the worlds of Noe's films are anything to go by, why should we not be afraid? It would be difficult to value a life that brings us so much suffering. Why should we bring life into this world that is just so vile and cruel? Ultimately, I cannot say with confidence that Gaspar Noe is actually saying anything profound here by any stretch of the imagination. There's a good chance he doesn't even take a clear stance on the argument of abortion or argument for or against natalism in general. He, he seems more interested in addressing these questions even if we cannot come to any unanimous agreement as a collective society. But it seems through his films he expresses that this sort of discussion is extremely important for people to have. Gaspar Noe's films are extremist, exploring both the negative and positive passions of troubled individuals. This worldview his films present and all their cynicism come across as hopeless, as if life itself is hopeless. But it seems that Gaspar Noe's films are simultaneously saying that there is, in fact, hope in life, despite the darkness. It may be difficult to achieve, but it is still there. We have to find the light at the end of our tunnels. We have to escape our fears, no matter how strong they may be. And we have to take into consideration both the good and bad in life before we can make a decision as to whether or not it is morally right for us to bring a child into it. And regardless of how bad Noe frames life as, his films do, in fact, argue a crucial point. There is value in life.